Hey everyone, uh, welcome to the Muddy Reviews. Keeping in our uh, Australian theme uh, that we've had going on for the uh, past couple weeks, I'm going to be going over this awesome bag uh, from Plat Attack. <clears throat> so, Plat Attack recently actually posted on their social media about, um, I guess, a newer gen or next gen uh, Plat Attack Spur Tropical. And I thought, hey, you know, I've got this here spur and let's go ahead and talk about it. So, this is an older model, uh, Plat Attack Spur Tropical. It's in DPCU, the Australian Auscam uh, Dixon Bunnies camo. And these are really great bags. If you can get yourself a Plat Attack Spur Tropical, be it an older model, new model, uh, whichever, I, I, I highly recommend it. They are great uh, three-day assault packs. They're great uh, medium-size uh, bags. So... First things first, uh, I guess the um, the elephant in the room is they're not a uh, super uh, unique design. Uh, they didn't re reinvent the wheel. Um, they did kind of, I won't say copy, um, took some design cues uh, from some existing bags that already that had already been around. Uh, but they didn't do anything differently than companies, I don't know, like LBT, uh, Tactical Taylor, Blackhawk had done. Um, there are some similarities to this bag that you can see in uh, LBT 3-Day Assaults, uh, L um, Eagle 3-Day uh, Assaults, uh, Tactical Taylor, etc. But there's also things that this bag has going for it that none of those have. Um, first thing that I'll note is I've never seen this um, back system on any of those model bags. Uh, Plat Attack's offering has this X little bar system back here and this mesh. And what it ends up doing is, so I've got my strap kind of looped in back here so you can't really get to it. So I'll actually undo it because I don't use my waist strap very often. Um, but what this does is it actually brings, as you adjust it, it kind of brings the bag off of your back and really kind of creates this, this space to breathe between, uh, the pack and your back and allows air to pass, so, which is really great in a humid environment or a jungle environment as these bags are called they're called the spur tropical because they're made for like tropical environments and that was a design uh element that i had not seen um in any offerings from lbt blackhawk etc and now maybe i just never saw them and they do exist but that is something i've only seen in the plat attack and i think is unique to plat attacks design i'm gonna go ahead and recinch my buckle here get that back out of the way yeah, like I said, I run this uh, without the waist strap most of the time, so it keeps my little back areas open up here. Um, shoulder straps, they're, they're nothing majorly different. Uh, you've got a sternum strap here. Um, this is one that I actually made myself. Uh, the original Plat Attack sternum strap had vanished. Uh, years ago and um it was smaller i didn't like it um so i made a one inch uh sternum strap myself to kind of balance it out it, i felt it was a little better and it was a little more robust so that was an addition i added to the bag but they did come with one originally had a very small buckle it was cool but didn't really serve the purpose i needed um the bags have this cool little platypus uh, skull logo here stitched into them You've got two D-rings on the shoulder straps here for attaching whatever. I normally attach like a small little like push light or something of that nature. Uh, you've got like spacer mesh on the inside of the shoulder straps to help aid in uh, cooling and breathing. Same with the uh, bottom here on the uh, waist pad. The bottom of the bag has a large Alice type uh, strapping set up molly uh, that's older like i said this is an older bag 
Uh, and it's got two large grommet drain holes. I think some of the newer offerings might have Molly down there, uh, Pals webbing instead of the Alice, but they uh, Alice style uh, webbing. But uh, again, possibly not. I don't know. I don't have a newer one, unfortunately. I wish I did. Um, actually, you know what? I have a brown one. I I, I got to look and see if it's got a different uh, setup than this. So it has four uh, good size outrigger pockets, two on the outsides here, uh, two in the front, and they both. They all are roughly the same size. Uh, they have uh, cordage uh, cinches that come down with a cord lock. And they've got these um, fast tech buckles. So these fast tech buckles are not ITW. They are actually made by uh, Fast Techs New Zealand. So that kind of sucks because if you want to get repair buckles, um, they can be a pain in the ass to deal with because they don't always work as as nicely with ITW uh, buckles, like for the stateside, uh, they, they can be a little tricky to work with. And getting these uh, New Zealand buckles here in the U.S. is difficult. So if you need repair buckles, you'll either have to go in and completely switch out your buckles or either try to, try to source one of these or I'll show you here on this side. So this is an American uh, ITW buckle and this is one of the... Uh, other ones, it will go in and it snaps in, but you can just feel uh, the difference in material. This is like a softer plastic. This is a much thicker polymer. And I feel like eventually this buckle, the New Zealand buckle is gonna give and break uh, utilizing it with this buckle, this repair buckle. Uh, so there's that. <clears throat> so the side pockets on the outside here, I think they're just a hair bigger uh, than these front pockets. I, I didn't take a measurement. They look like they're just a little bit bigger. And they do have a pass-through, but it doesn't go all the way through. So you have this uh, small pass-through area here where I got my hand coming in and out. So you could shove something in there if you needed to. Yeah, but it doesn't go all the way through the bottom. And then the top pockets here, here, have pass-throughs and these pass-throughs actually go as you can see in the video all the way through uh, the entire length of the pocket so you could shove something and it would go all the way through unlike the sides the sides are sewn completely down you also have a pocket here zipper closure like a standard uh, three-day and then you have another pocket here medium sized pocket and then you've got your main pocket here and inside of the main pocket you have an elasticized uh, sleeve for like uh, if you had to put a radio or a bladder you can and then you've got an antenna or a bladder um, hose pass through on the top here as you can see right there underneath the drag handle And then you just zip that shut. And then on the very top, you've got these uh, buckles that'll cinch down and kind of secure your load. And if you had to, uh, you could loosen these as needed. And you could put something up here, like a mat or um, a jacket or whatever for easy grab and access. Um, these pockets here are big enough to hold a canteen and a small Nalgene. And like I was saying, so I got a canteen right here. This is a Nalgene canteen. And it fits uh, nicely in this pocket. One of these Outrider pockets. I've also got a large knife that if you wanted to you could shove back here you could secure it down it's like a little tie down right here and you could secure this down uh, at the tie down point and you would have uh, this large bush knife right there or if you really wanted to run it lower 
uh, you could run it through one of these pass-throughs here because uh, it goes a little further and it won't. And then you can just secure it down as needed. And now you've got your, your little bush blade kind of shoved through the, the bag itself. It's kind of cool. I like that. Uh, the outrigger pouches are all big enough to run a canteen, like I was pointing out. Every one of them can run a canteen, a full-size canteen. So if you wanted to, uh, if you were so inclined, you could run four full canteens on the outside of your bag and just go from there. Uh, these these pouches are great because they'll hold all sorts of items uh, that are in that relative size, you know, bigger than your hand. Um, and they're all quick access pouches, quick access items. Overall, uh, really great bag. I, I really like these. Uh, like I said, I have one of these in a Coyote Brown Khaki as well. It's a slightly newer model. Um, you know what? I'm going to pause you guys. I'm going to grab it and I'm going to show you the small differences between the two. And I'm back. Uh, so here is the newer model. Uh, this is the brown model. Um, it's not a terribly newer than this one, uh, but it's just a little bit newer. Um, one of the big differences is uh, they added these rubberized uh, zipper pulls on this version, uh, which they didn't have on that one. It was just uh, these sewn down tape. I don't think in this version we had the uh, little mesh organizer yet. I think that was in the the newer version I have down the garage. It's broken. Yeah. So in the newer, even newer version of the garage I have that I got, it was all cut up and jacked up. Uh, there was actually on the inside of the lid here, um, there was a mesh organizer that they had put into it. So that was kind of cool. Um, in this model, there's a slight difference is uh, the back has a little bit of padding sewn in right here, as you can see. Uh, there's a tie down now for your hydration that does not exist in the DPCU version. Uh, you got a little flat attack tag right here. Uh, internally, that's really it as far as major changes. Uh, the external pouches aren't any different. They're all still, they still got the same pass-throughs at top, pass-throughs and uh, pass-throughs, nothing changed there. Uh, they, I, they kept the same uh, Alice style bottom and also here on the face, there's this little Alice style attachment here as well. And then on this outer pocket, um, I don't remember if it's on my other bag. Take a look, do we have it? Is it there? Is it there? It is there. So we both have this uh, platypus skull on there. And then on the shoulders, actually, also this one, uh, this gives you a better idea what the original sternum strap looked like. Uh, this is what it looked like on the original. Uh, this is the original sternum strap for this bag. It's still there. Uh, and this gives you a kind of a little better uh, indication of the, um, the mesh. Comparatively, uh, you can see it a little differently. This is what it looks like, the little spacer mesh that you have on this bag. This little, like, mesh hammock divider that, that, that breathes and gives you space behind you to help you uh, combat all that icky, fucking prickly heat and nasty sweat you're going to get uh, when you're moving through a hot, humid environment. So, yeah, that is a... Uh, Plat Attack Spur Bag. I mean, they are excellent, excellent three-day assault bags. Um, definitely, definitely want to get my hands on a newer model to see how they stack up and see what the changes have been. Um, between these two models, not a major uh, amount of differences, just some minor tweaks and upgrades. And then from the other model I said that I have in the garage that I had gotten that uh, somebody had chopped up. It's like there's no shoulder straps on it. Uh, they had cut these uh, side pockets off. It's a shit show. Uh, there were some just minor changes and modifications made to that bag that were 
step ups from this bag where they had like i said they'd added like a uh, mesh divider pocket on the inside of the main the main pouch um little things like that but nothing nothing to write home about nothing to make you go oh shit that's a huge design step so i really would love to get a like 2022 model to see what they have changed versus these older bags because these are definitely um early early aughts to late 90s um to mid 2000s going into like the early teens so i'd love to see what they got what their offerings uh have now anyway thanks for watching i hope this was a beneficial video for you i hope you got something out of it if you were thinking about a plat attack bag i hope this video shows you that they are definitely worth the the look um, i think they're worth the money shipping is going to be a little bit of a beast from um Australia, but if you could find a, if you're stateside and you could find a local um, vendor who carries them, definitely get one. If uh, in your local uh, country, principality, whatever, if you have a vendor that carries these bags, I would definitely think about getting one because they're definitely worth the money and they're uh, worth their weight in gold. They're excellent, excellent three day packs. Take care, guys. Leave me a comment if you have any uh, questions or comments or if you have any experiences with the plot attack spurs that i might not maybe you know something about the newer bags i would love to know uh differences what's your experience versus my experience see you guys in the next one take care